Plural tumors. Pleura may be involved by primary tumors or secondary tumors. Primary tumors may be benign, such as benign fibrous mesothelioma or benign mesothelioma, also called pleural fibroma, or malignant, such as malignant mesothelioma. Secondary tumors are more common than primary tumors, and most common secondary tumors are metastases. Most common pleural tumors are metastases. Most common primary is lung cancer, and most commonly metastatize from lung and breast cancers. Solitary fibrous tumor, also known as pleural fibroma or benign mesothelioma. These are non-invasive and fibrosing tumors, primary benign tumors of pleura. Rarely malignant tumors. The tumor is often attached to the pleural surface by a pedicle, and these tumors do not usually produce pleural effusion. They consist of dense, fibrous tissue with occasional cysts filled with viscid fluid. Microscopically, tumors show whorls of reticulin and collagen fibers among which are interspersed spindle cells resembling fibroblasts. They are not related to asbestose exposure. These tumor cells are CD34 positive and keratin negative. By immunostaining, which distinguishes it from malignant mesothelioma, which is CD34 negative and keratin positive. Malignant pleural mesothelioma. Malignant mesothelioma is a rare and insidious neoplasm with a poor prognosis. Malignant pleural mesothelioma is the most common type of malignant mesothelioma, which can arise from mesothelial surfaces of the pleural cavity peritoneal cavity, tunica vaginalis, or pericardium. Definition Malignant pleural mesothelioma is a rare cancer of mesothelial cells usually arising in the parietal or visceral pleura. Epidemiology Risk factors include asbestos exposure. 80 to 90% of individuals with this cancer have a history of exposure to asbestos. Those who work directly with asbestos such as shipyard workers, miners, insulators are at greatest risk. But malignant mesotheliomas can appear in individuals whose only exposure was living in proximity to an asbestos factory or being a relative of an asbestos worker. The latent period for developing malignant mesothelioma after initial exposure is long, 25 to 40 years, because Causative driver mutations are acquired slowly over a long period of time. Ionizing radiation. Exposure to ionizing radiation to subdiaphragmatic fields in the treatment of malignancy, such as Hodgkin's lymphoma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, testicular cancer, has also been associated with a risk of mesothelioma. A genetic predisposition for mesothelioma has been identified Mutation in the gene BAP1 encodes a tumor suppressor involved in DNA repair that has been associated with other cancers, especially ocular melanoma. Simian virus 40, SV40, is a polymavirus with oncogenic potentials in humans can cause mesothelioma. Note, no etiologic relationship with smoking. Once inhaled, asbestos fibers remain in the body for life. Thus, lifetime risk after exposure does not diminish over time, unlike with smoking, in which the risk decreases after cessation. Pathogenesis Asbestos exposure through inhalation Asbestos fibers preferentially gather near the mesothelial cell layer where they generate reactive oxygen species, cause DNA damage and mutation causing malignant mesothelioma. Pathology. Gross pathology includes early stage malignant pleural mesothelioma presence as multiple small nodules that characteristically are more pronounced on the parietal pleura but can also involve the visceral pleura. As the tumor progresses, these nodules 
collates to form a thickened rind of tumor that fuses the parietal and visceral pleurae. At a more advanced stage, the tumor typically encases the entire lung and extends along the interlobar fissures. Malignant mesotheliomas are often preceded by extensive pleural fibrosis and plaque formation, seen on computed tomography scans. These tumors begin in a localized area and over time spread widely, either by contagious growth or by diffuse seeding of pleural surfaces. At autopsy, the affected lung typically is ensheathed by a layer of yellow-white, firm, variably gelatinous tumor that obliterates the pleural space. The neoplasm may directly invade the thoracic wall or the subpleural lung tissue, but distant metastases are uncommon. Based on the fact that the normal mesothelial cells are biphasic, giving rise to pleural lining cells as well as underlying fibrous tissue, mesotheliomas occur in one of the three morphologic appearances. Epithelial, which accounts for 60%, the features are cuboidal cells with small papillary buds lined tubular and microcystic spaces. This is the most common pattern and also the one most likely to be confused with a pulmonary adenocarcinoma. Epithelioid type of mesothelioma resembles adenocarcinoma of lung and can be differentiated from it by the following features. Positive staining for mucopolysaccharide, lack of staining for carcinoembryonic antigen, strong staining or keratin, positive staining for calretinin, which is the best IHC marker, Wilms tumor, one susceptibility gene product, cytokeratin 5-6 and CK7, mesothelin, WT1, and thrombomodulin. Ultrastructurally shows presence of long, slender, branching microvilli and abundant tonofilaments, but absent microvillous rootlets and lamellar bodies. Note that lung adenocarcinomas will show MOC31 and BG8 positivity and short, plump microvilli. Sarcomatis accounts for 20%. Spindled, occasionally fibroblastic appearing cells grow in sheets. They resemble fibrosarcoma. Mixed or biphasic accounts for 20%, having both sarcomatis and epithelial areas. Note that the diagnosis of mesothelioma can be difficult for several reasons. Various metastatic tumors can present in the pleural cavity. Histologically, these can look similar to mesotheliomas, as can B9 lesions arising in the pleural cavity. Clinical features. Most patients with MPM present with the gradual onset of nonspecific symptoms, such as chest pain, dyspnea, cough, hoarseness, or dysphagia, which can occur in the setting of an extensive intrathoracic disease. Diagnosis. The diagnosis of pleural mesothelioma is established by morphologic and immunohistochemical features of a cytologic or surgical specimen. Chest imaging typically shows unilateral pleural thickening and pleural effusion. Immunohistochemistry panels are an integral part of the diagnostic approach to these tumors in addition to the routine histologic examination. Electron microscopy may be useful when the immunohistochemistry results are equivocal. The use of fluorescent in situ hybridization to detect P16 deletion is now used in challenging cases where the differential diagnosis is benign versus malignant mesothelial proliferations. Note, initial evaluation of patients with suspected MPM includes CT of the chest with contrast, thoracentesis of any existing pleural effusion, and closed pleural biopsy. However, if insufficient tissue is acquired to make a diagnosis, surgical intervention via video-assisted thoracoscopic biopsy or open thoracotomy should be pursued. 
For diagnosed cases of pleural mesothelioma, we obtain integrated positron emission tomography with computed tomography, PET-CT, as the initial staging assessment. For patients in whom imaging suggests resectable disease, we pursue extended surgical staging prior to definitive surgery. Differential diagnosis. The differential diagnosis includes benign processes such as inflammatory reactions as well as malignant processes including metastasis from other solid tumors. Evidence of stromal invasion on biopsy distinguishes mesothelioma from benign etiologies while immunohistochemistry can distinguish mesothelioma from other malignancies. Treatment. Patients with malignant pleural mesothelioma generally present with locally extensive disease. Surgery, radiation therapy, and systemic chemotherapy each may be beneficial as single modalities in selected situations, but the prognosis for prolonged survival is poor. For patients with malignant pleural mesothelioma limited to one hemithorax, a detailed evaluation is indicated to assess whether the disease is amenable to a macroscopic complete resection, whether there is adequate cardiopulmonary function to tolerate such a procedure, and whether there are any medical contraindications. For surgical candidates, we suggest a combined modality approach that includes chemotherapy, generally a platinum plus pemetrexed surgery, with either pleurectomy, decortication, or radical extrapleural pneumonectomy, NRT. For patients who are not surgical candidates, management of symptoms from any pleural effusion, systemic chemotherapy, and palliative radiotherapy may all have a role. Prognosis. The prognosis of patients with malignant pleural mesothelioma is poor with overall survival being on the order of 9 to 17 months after diagnosis. Few patients are cured. Figure 13.48, malignant mesothelioma. Note the thick, firm, white, pleural tumor that ensheats this bisected lung. Malignant mesothelioma, transverse section of an extrapleural pneumonectomy surgical specimen with the entire right lung, parietal and visceral pleurae, portions of pericardium, and the majority of the right hemidiaphragm. Note the thick rind of tumor along the pleural surface encasing the lung, interlobar fissures, and invading the diaphragm. Pleural biopsy. Photomicrograph of pleural biopsy showing malignant mesothelioma. A positive stain is brown. The immunohistochemical panel supports the diagnosis of malignant mesothelioma with positive nuclear stain for Wilms tumor protein, positive nuclear and cytoplasmic stain for calretinin, positive stain for D240, negative stain for transcription termination factor 1, negative stain for MOC31. Malignant mesothelioma. Photomicrograph of an epithelial malignant mesothelioma. The sheets of pleomorphic cells are epithelial in appearance with eosinophilic cytoplasm and fairly well-defined cell borders. Cytoplasmic vacuoles are present, which can lead to confusion with a signet ring type of adenocarcinoma. These vacuoles can be shown by electron microscopy to contain crystallized Hyaluronic acid. Mesothelioma cell. Electron micrograph of a human mesothelioma cell showing abundant microvilli arising from the cell surface. Malignant mesothelioma. CT scan shows right-sided nodular circumferential pleural thickening exceeding 1 cm in thickness, typical of a malignant process. No clear-cut invasion of the chest wall is present. A slightly enlarged pretracheal lymph node proved to be reactive in nature. Malignant mesothelioma, CT scan shows right-sided circumferential pleural thickening with thickening of the major fissure. 
there is extension into azygoesophageal recess and into anterior mediastinal pericardial fat. Mesothelioma on MRI. A coronal T1 weighted image shows a multilobular mass in the right paravertebral sulcus, extending into the minor fissure and along the diaphragm. Mesothelioma with thickened fissures. Sagittal T2 weighted image shows high signal caused by tumor extending from the diaphragmatic pleura into the thickened major and minor fissures.